I'm Ali Tack, welcome to Forza McLaren, and in this episode we're getting behind the wheel of the McLaren 600LT. LT stands for long tail, a hallowed designation amongst McLarens, and a nod to the Le Mans winning F1 GTR long tail. With enhanced aerodynamics, a carbon fibre monocoque and titanium exhausts, this car certainly is the full picture. So to get this thing in the frame, we're going to need a very special guest. This week we're joined by photographer to the car stars, Patrick Gosling. Patrick, welcome to the show. You've got a test today, not just of your driving skills, but also of your virtual photography chops. I'm, uh, I'm here and uh, revved up and ready to give it a go. It's, uh, it's an interesting, interesting uh, prospect, this, but uh, yeah, absolutely super happy and stoked uh, you know, to get cracking with this. All right. Uh, well, the first thing that we're going to do today, and, and we'll chat in just a second about uh, your, your incredible career in car photography. First thing we're going to do, though, is uh, head out on a little route and uh, find our way towards the first checkpoint. Our journey would begin with a drive out of Edinburgh to the westernmost edge of the map and a chance to grill Patrick on where it all began. I started off very early on. I, um, I really enjoyed photography when I was at, uh, when I was at school. And realised that the academic side of things wasn't actually going to be, uh, yeah, hold much of the future for me. Even, even though my father was a, was a, was a mathematician and uh, keen for me to go into uh, the more academic side, I, um, okay. I enjoyed photography and I realised that I actually wanted to go ahead and do something with it. So I went to art college, did a foundation course in general art and design, and then I applied for a job at uh, a local magazine publishers and um, started working for them age 17, I was a junior photographer darkroom assistant working on car and motorcycle magazines. I was very lucky when I was yeah, really, really young. My father was a member of a, a motor club. One of his oldest friends ran stalls that were based at Silverstone for the Formula One Grand Prix. This is back in the, in the yeah, late 70s. Oh, wow, and cool. I used to go and work at Silverstone when I was like 11, 12 years old, selling film at, at Formula One Grand Prix. What was your first time sort of, uh, sort of seeing McLarens, getting involved with McLaren? Uh, was that through the Grand Prix, seeing them there, or uh, is it a brand that you got involved with later on? Basically, I started off motorcycle racing for about 15 years. Uh, and I had an agency that, uh, where we were specialising in doing two world sports. We were doing um, motorcycle Grand Prix, world superbikes, British superbikes, covering a lot of launches on the motorcycling side. And then I was very lucky to get an opportunity to go and work in Formula One uh, at the beginning of the 2000s. And I, and I started working as a sponsorship photography, photographer okay. sorry, within Formula One. Um, and I worked for um, a title sponsor for a Formula One team who in 2007 moved over and became a title sponsor for McLaren in Formula One. So I okay. started doing their sponsorship work, working within McLaren. I all of a sudden got a, got an access all areas pass into into the yeah the amazing McLaren Technology Centre, right, and I was right. photographing the Formula One cars and the drivers, and it was at about the same time when McLaren Automotive was was you know, moving away from their Mercedes um, SLR project and into what has become McLaren Automotive, and it was just one of those very very lucky circumstance things where I moved from the Formula One side into the automotive side and started working with, with McLaren on the automotive side right at the very beginning of the, what was the MP412C, then became the McLaren 12C. It's, it's one of those places that the first time you walk in there, you cannot believe your eyes and then the 999th time you go in there, it still <laughs> absolutely takes your breath away. Nothing's changed, yeah. Nothing's <laughs> exactly changed. the same. We're going to be rolling down this road and I think this is your moment to sort of yeah. start start give, seeing that creative photographic eye. Uh, we're going to be going down the road. You've got to find us a spot to take like a little sort of uh, a dynamic shot in, a shot which uh, which looks like, uh, you know, the car's moving a little bit, kind of traveling. Um, yeah. And yeah, talk us through sort of the process of what you're looking for in scouting a location, but also, yeah, I mean, what you're looking for in terms of composing the photograph as well. Absolutely. So, are, are we going to are we going to treat this a little bit like a like if we were out together, the two of us, right. on a on a shoot, and you are my pro driver, and yeah, we're connected by walkie talkies and we're driving along, and I go, hang on a minute, stop, we'll do it here, and then yeah, I'll get you to drive past and I'll capture a frame as we go past. 
You know what? You know what, Patrick? I like that idea a lot. I think because I, for me, it makes it flatters my ego to think of myself as a pro driver, um, <laughs> and, and that's that's most of it for me. Uh, but we also get a good photo out of it on the back end. Okay, let's give it a go. Absolutely, let's give it a try. Uh, we're heading up north here um, towards an area where sort of uh, there, there's some there's some scenic locations. Uh, there's a, a nice big uh, replica bridge uh, from uh, from the Scottish Highlands. And uh, yeah, it gets it gets quite pretty through. You have to go through the uh, go through the splash first, though. Uh, <laughs> not sure how how a McLaren. Maybe you have to ride, ride the ride, raise the ride height a little bit if you want to do that uh, in real life. Yeah, yeah, nose lift. Yeah, that's right. I mean, yeah, some, of this, that's some of this drifting stuff is amazing that you're doing. So uh, <laughs> you know, yeah, maybe we should try try to get uh, yeah capture a freeze a freeze frame of you drifting with the uh, with the smoke pouring off the rears. Let's give that a try. All right, if you, um, I, I can do that. I can, I can yeah. hit the handbrake and do some skids. Um, that sounds like that sounds like a good shot. Recalc I think. So, okay. Um, what are, yeah. What have we got? We've got this yeah. big long right hander coming up. So if I pull over on the left hand side here, okay. Let's let's give it a go and just yeah, get you just to come through. Yeah, with a big smoky drift. I'm gonna send it. I'm gonna, <laughs> I already know. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna absolutely send this. Yeah. Okay. okay. Okay, I'm, wait, I'm, wait I'm coming now. Coming. I'm coming now. On route. On route. I'm gonna slam the handbrake here. Get some. Oh, there's a lot of cars. Okay. Okay. We're good. We're good. Uh, no. Oh, <laughs> early. <laughs> Bit early. Yeah. Um, we'll they, try it again. Looks more like an accident. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. I think I'm coming now. I'm, I'm Send sending it. it. I'm sending it. Okay. Seventy. 88, traveling back in time. Go. That's it. Oh, oh that, that felt the, good. The road. That felt good. <laughs> we'll say that it was taken in, uh, taken in uh, continental Europe. All right, so you're looking right now at the photo, uh, kind of working yeah, out exactly. how you're going to compose your shot. What, what, how does that work? What are you looking for when you're doing that? You know, it's all about you know, choosing what, you, what it is that you're going to do before you actually take the shot. So you... you so, so, so what you're what you're hoping for is yeah. that the car will follow a prescribed line, and that you know, the angle that that you are in the point at which the car will be at its most dramatic, producing the most amount of smoke, and then you uh, yeah, then you just kind of yeah hit the button and yeah, you do keep your eyes open. I was going to say close your close your eyes and uh, and, uh, <laughs> and hope, hope. Back, but, uh, <laughs> but do keep your eyes open. <laughs> yeah, you okay. do keep your eyes open. So, <laughs> so you're you're lining up like. I mean, if you're if you're taking a photo and you're kind of camping out, waiting for a car to roll on past at a sort of prescribed moment on the road, then you're yeah. setting up like all the background stuff. You've already worked it out. That's already yeah, done. absolutely. But yeah, I mean, one of the one of the one of the most important things that you've got to try to remember is that you don't want any rubbish in the background that's going to distract from what it is that you're actually taking. Yeah, you know, you, what what it is that you're actually photographing. Okay. So, okay. So you're looking out for like like we were doing. We were waiting for cars to go go through and then you then you make sure that you you haven't got things like telephone boxes or telegraph poles or road signs or any, any <laughs> furniture that's go, yeah. that's going to ruin the shot because you want it to be it's about it's about the car you're photographing the car so you want it to be clean you want the shot to be clean and you don't you know i'll even go as far as you know running over the road to pick up bits of litter that have that have been dropped because you know okay yes you can retouch them but you know why not just try to do it all in camera rather than having to waste time retouching afterwards. So when you're using a camera, like, so if I use a camera, I'll often just use autofocus because, uh, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an am, uh, mm. not a pro. Um, would you, are you, you know, would you use the focus re reel on a lens? Is there an advantage yeah. to that? Um, it's really interesting. A friend of mine was shooting a race this weekend and he shot the start on autofocus and something something happened the pro the problem with autofocus is you've got autofocus windows within the frame of the camera and you have to concentrate a hundred percent on where that autofocus window is because you 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 may well have seen yeah even you know using non-professional cameras if the yeah. subject that you are trying to photograph moves out of the autofocus window the autofocus just goes firing onto the background and then the subject is out of focus so That's you right. have to constantly keep that autofocus window on the subject that you want to focus on so 
with 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 cars, particularly with yeah. McLaren's, it's, yeah, it's really easy. You know, I've had loads of practice and I kind of know what I'm doing. But you always pick an autofocus window where you're going to be, and you'll see you know, on the frame that I'm doing now that you're pretty much looking at the front quarter, so it's the headlight, and you need an area of contrast for the autofocus to be able to to hook onto. So you're looking for an area of contrast, so it'll be the the where the headlight is on towards the paint color or it'll be where the 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 end of the bonnet finishes and the windscreen starts where it goes from color to black and you've got to really concentrate hard on holding that autofocus window on that change of contrast because that's what the camera is that's what okay. the camera is using as its as its focus point is the is the difference in contrast you can move the autofocus window around there's a button on the back of the camera that you can move the autofocus window around so it so that it's for instance uh, yeah uh, yeah my bottom right so that when the car comes in you know uh, you pick the camp car up really early and you're following it through the corner and then you know as the composition is right you know that the autofocus is hooked on and it's pulled it's, it's pulled focus all the way through and then and then you you file you know i only ever file one frame yeah, because I'm just waiting for that moment. And, you know, I come yeah. from the old days when you didn't have autofocus and you literally had to pre-focus on a bit of tarmac and wait for the car to pop into it and, and fire your frame off. <laughs> and then you'd right. fly home with a bag of film and not know whether you got anything in focus. It's, film was about 10 quid a roll and there was only 36 frames on a roll. Right, so yeah. Yeah, if you held your finger down, you'd be burning through 10 quid every, every you know, 20 seconds or 10 seconds or whatever. I'd go to those races and I'd shoot 40 rolls of film the whole weekend. And that was three oh. days of work. And I'd shoot wow. 40, 40, 45 rolls of film. So just a second, I'll get my calculator. I'm starting to do it in my head. <laughs> I got that, I got that you know, far away look. <laughs> I was like 40. 1,250 <laughs> frames. 1,250 frames. No, sorry, 1,600, that's 1,620 frames that I would 3, shoot. 3,700 and... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 1,620 frames that I'd shoot over the course of a race weekend, uh, on average. Wow. Yeah. And now, if yeah. I'm in the back of a car doing tracking shots around a race circuit, I can shoot 1,000 frames in two laps on digital. Wow. Because I've that, got the, that's no got the time. space. I mean, that's four days work previously is, is that amount. Yeah. And that's, yeah. does it get you more photos? Do you, get, <laughs> you shoot no, so much more? No, yeah. no it, it gives you more variety to choose from. It gives, you more, it gives you more assets to work with, but I'd still only choose one or two. So anyway, I've got to a shot. Hey, I, cool. I, I have a shot. Okay. So, okay, so I've pulled the picture into Lightroom which is a, a much simpler version of, of Photoshop. It's probably the workhorse for most professional photographers now. And I'm just going to do some very, very basic tweaks just, just to make it look yeah, a little bit more natural. Because I've selected to shoot this on quite a long lens, you can see that the, the back of the image is uh, out of focus slightly, but the front of the car is pin sharp. So the first thing to do is, yeah, I'll just set the, set the white balance. And then I'm just tweaking the exposure very slightly and then I'll just open up the shadows slightly take down the highlights a little bit and then I'll probably do some a little bit of cheating and just put a little radial filter on there and just boost the sharpness slightly and also maybe just take down the highlights just so you get a little bit more detail in there in the car it looks amazing yeah, yeah. the car's great the smoke looks good I'll tell you what we could do actually we could wow. just put a little radial filter on there and just try and make the smoke just look a little bit more more banging so <laughs> another photography technical term there banging, <laughs> yeah, another, banging another. smoke yeah <laughs> okay and That's then so maybe cool. just pull the exposure up a little bit i'm i'm pretty happy with that yeah, I, 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 that's awesome. That's so cool. And it's amazing how much it lifts it as well, especially the light, the white balance. Just bringing yeah. the white balance changed the, changed the feel of the photo completely. Yeah, I mean, look, if you, if you can see this, you know, yeah, you go super, super warm and then you just bring it, bring it back. You see how the, bl the sky is reflected in the top of the car and the puddles, and then I just pull the blue down slightly. Wow, yeah. It just, just makes it look a little bit more natural. We've just had a look at uh, some 
post-production, post-techniques uh, we can use on thoughts of photos. But the, there's a kind of a whole world of this stuff. Uh, and you have a, a shot that a shot that I thought was amazing, uh, which was of a McLaren out in Scotland. This is what we call a rig shot. So it starts off with there. The rig is mounted onto the camera. You can see there's, there's three, three points where the camera is mounted because you have to triangulate. And then there's running down here, there's a seven meter pole. So the camera's obviously right. hanging off the end and then the camera is mounted and it's actually mounted upside down. So these frames are, these frames are rotated. So it actually, it actually looks like that when I'm looking through the camera. Well, okay, um, right. <laughs> So, so you mount the camera on the rig and then we've got a driver sitting in the car and he's, he's ready to go. So you start off, you shoot a base frame and you shoot a base frame using a polarizing filter so that you've got the black areas nice and black. And then you shoot the next frame where you rotate the polarizing filter so you can get more detail in the, 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 the bits that the polarizer didn't hit to start with. So you can see how it's nice and dark in this bit here. Oopsie. And then, and then you rotate the polarizing filter so uh, that yeah. it's now dark down in this section here. Okay. Yeah. So you've got your two base frames of the car static. You then put the car in reverse. You'll see that the reversing light is on. <laughs> and very, very, very gently just ease off. And the car is actually running backwards very, very slowly. <laughs> okay. And you can see that it's actually not a very smooth road because you can see here, there's lots of sort of like buzzy vibration. But you yeah. know what? I don't mind that. I don't mind that. It, adds, it looks like speed to me. It doesn't look like yeah, vibration. Yeah, absolutely. When you look yeah. at the final image, you'll see that we've actually emphasized it a little bit in retouch. Okay? So there we are. We've got the car, and it's rolling backwards very, very gently. You have to make sure that you've done things like make sure that the driver is actually looking like he's driving forward. Because if he was looking up in the mirror, his head would be in the wrong position in the, fi in the finished image. So, <laughs> Got his arm back and he's like leaning <laughs> over exactly, the, uh, exactly, yeah, <laughs> between the yeah. seats, yeah. <laughs> um, so you've got, so this is your motion shot. So this is the th this is for the wheels turning. So then this is, this is the really tricky bit. What you do is you, you then get a, a tripod and you bring the tripod, you put the tripod on the ground and you bring the tripod up and you support the camera. So the, remember the camera's upside down. So you then have to clamp the camera onto the top of the tripod, and then you remove the rig. Wow. So okay. you've now got the camera in pretty much the same position as yeah. the camera was with the rig moving, but everything is super duper sharp. You then move the car out of the way, and you take a shot on the road. So <laughs> that, that means that the retoucher can basically put all of the motion from here and add it into the static road. And then you've got the static car where you can add the moving wheels and then you join <laughs> it all together and you end up with that as if by magic. It's, it is magic. It's not just as if by, yeah, that is, that is absolute magic. Amazing. But you can, Amazing. You can imagine, so, I'm going to stop sharing that now. But you can <laughs> so many different, yeah. It takes a long time. You're looking ahead towards yeah. the corner or if you're doing a rig shot from the front of the car looking back, you can see that there's something going on. You, you can see that it's come from somewhere. So you've yeah, got this yeah. like, beautiful vanishing point. So you do that, then you've got to unpack the other car, because obviously you've got to have another car, because you can't carry a seven metre rig around on it. In a, in a <laughs> and uh, you have to build it all. And it's all got, uh, yeah, it's all, it's all um, tension. So it's got a big tensioning wire on it. So you build it all up. And then you, you know, I, luckily I always have someone helping me. So I'll, I'll hold yeah. the camera in the position that I want it to be. And I'll get um, you know, one of my assistants to then wave this massive pole around. And then we have to locate the suckers on the car and get it all rigid and all tightened up. And then you let go of the camera and it's like, phew, we haven't pulled the windscreen out or, uh, or cracked the panel or... <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah, nothing quick, broken. Quick. <laughs> Run. Yeah. So next thing, I think we're going to practice a little bit of drifting, Patrick, and kind of okay. start working towards a new shot. Uh, we've had a look at dynamic shots. We're going to have a look at something which is sort of a little different. The idea of a tracking shot, uh, a car that's sort of really, uh, really getting sideways, really doing something uh, special. I put a 
waypoint up that we can head to okay. uh, if we follow the green marker. And uh, once we get there, it's peeing down with rain now, uh, so we can uh, we can practice doing some slides. This might not be your first time though sliding around in a 600 LT. This is the car that you've got. This is uh, you got one parked outside, have you? Uh, yeah, I have. Well, it, it, it's currently in storage. It's something that I've always wanted to yeah, be part of the brand in that sense. Yeah. You get very connected to working with these things. You know, when you when you spend so much time with them over the years of um, yeah, all the development work that goes into them, and you know, you're working with the engineers and working with the test drivers and working with the PR teams and going on the launches, and you get really, really connected with them. And um, yeah, very luckily, I was on the launch of this in Hungary, and they had the full color range of the mall wow. parked outside every day. And every day I'd go, maybe I'll get an orange one. No, maybe I'll get a white one. And yeah, then I'd go out on the track and I'd go, do you know the one that looks the fastest? It's chicane grey. Chicane grey looks absolutely, yeah, by far and away, when it's out buzzing around the track with a pro driver behind the wheel, it's, uh, yeah, definitely going for chicane grey. So, yeah, I'm very lucky. But, uh, so, so that's the car that you're driving here in game, right? That's chicane grey? That is chicane grey, yeah. Oh, get out. Exactly. Okay, cool. How's it been as a sort of owner's experience? Has it been a, uh, uh, you know, everything, everything you wanted it to be? What, what kind of, I guess, I guess what I'm asking is, as someone who doesn't own a McLaren, <laughs> what does it feel like to own a McLaren? <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a very special feeling. It is a very, very special feeling. You know, a, you know, I'm very familiar with the cars. You know, I'm, I'm very lucky that I, that I get to experience them firsthand. You know. Yeah, when when we're yeah on on event. So yeah. I've been driven by some of the best drivers in the world around circuits. I've had these amazing drivers drive them for me, so I can see what they're capable of. Uh, yeah, I have to admit, I'm probably a better photographer than I am driver. However, the great thing about the 600LT is it is yeah, it's the thing that attracted me to it. It is so gentle it's so easy to drive and it's so comfortable in the way that mclaren's just have this um, amazing crossover you know they're neither you know they are super super fast if you want to you know give it a good old kick but actually you, you don't need to drive it that fast it's that's amazing game. that's amazing well that's that's awesome it's, it's just so yeah it's it's just very cool whenever you meet somebody who's very passionate about uh, a car, a brand, and uh, is able to be a part of that history themselves. I think that's always a special thing. So it's it's just nice to hear from you. But well, how are you feeling about about doing some slidey slides in in the 600 LT? Is it coming to you? Are you getting better at it, or are you? Uh, how's, how's it looking? Yeah, but hang on. I think we got traction control on them. I think we're just going um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, to yeah, twist that. It's tending to. Yeah, stop us from doing yeah, quite as much uh, drama. With drama on our minds, it was time to head south to the festival site. A journey that took a little longer than expected. I don't like these damp bits. Traction control off, it's not really uh, a comfortable feeling. It's you always know that like at any moment there could be a bump in the road or like a little <laughs> puddle or just anything that's just gonna <laughs> spoil your day. <laughs> oh, oh, that's it. That's more like uh, it. Beauty. Bit of over rotation. Bit of over rotation. It was looking so good for a while though. It's actually quite hard oh, to keep man. steady around here. I'm doing the same. <laughs> there it is. There we go. Oh, it's beautiful, beautiful. It's actually looking really nice with the, you know, coming around the bit of the roundabout that we've just been on where it's backlit and the smoke's backlit. That looks really cool. We'll just get this van driver to have a little look. This so section right. here, see, see where you come around and the, and the yeah. light bounces off the road? Beautiful, because we, we're, we're approaching golden hour here really, aren't we? I mean, if you yeah, look at the yeah. sun, the, the, where the sun is. It'd we be should... a cracking time to do, uh, to do a tracking shot if we can. Well, let's try and do yeah. one here then before, before the sun goes down. Let's try and get one, uh, let's okay. try and get one right here. So let's get around the roundabout to, so let me think about how we can do this. Okay, so we need to shoot just as, as it's in this, in this patch of light here. Okay, <laughs> I'm on my way. When you, when you are. Now, we might have got a car in the background again. Yeah, let's do one more lap. Let's do one let's more do lap. One more lap. Okay. 
Oh! <laughs> Pro driver gets it wrong. There you go. <laughs> no matter how much you paid. I <laughs> know, right? Yeah. <laughs> Got a lead foot. Here we go. Here we go. Got it under control this time. Hey, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, I mean, does that does that sort of thing happen in real shoots? So you sort of you're driving along and then suddenly it's sunset, or are you do you always plan for goals an hour? Is that a, yeah? Are you working yeah, around you it? Yeah, you would. Um, you would plan for it definitely. I actually, to be honest, I actually prefer shooting after the sun's gone down. Huh. Because then you get the lovely colours reflected in the sky, and then you you can get the yeah the colour on the on the car. Um, hang on a sec, I'm just I'm trying to get the angle on the car right so that we can still see the smoke. I'm trying to hide the uh, the car that's coming around the roundabout. Oh man! So X focus. Okay, now Y going to camera settings. Right, so shutter speed. I feel as though there might be a safety issue there uh, with, yeah. you know, having having another car rolling along and leaning out with a camera. Are you strapped in? Is there like, is there yeah. stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How yeah, does that yeah. work? Absol yeah, absolutely. So doing tracking shots on the road is is really risky. It's really, really risky because the, the, the unfortunate thing is that in order for you to get a great tracking shot, you need to be on the wrong, the tracking vehicle needs to be on the wrong side of the road. Right. So the only way you can do that is I if see. you yeah. close the road or yeah. you're on a really long straight bit of road and the driver of the tracking vehicle can see so far ahead that he's confident that he can pull out onto the wrong side of the road so that I can get a three-quarter shot across the car. It's not something that I enjoy very much because he, you just don't know. There could be a side road, there could, somebody could pull out. So I'm not a massive fan of doing tracking shots on the road. Right. Doing them right. on, the, on, a, on a race on a racetrack, yeah, much much safer, much much safer. That's right. You can but, control what's out there. Yeah. Yeah. There's you can a lot, control yeah. what's out there. And 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 yes, to answer your question, I always wear a harness. Always wear a harness. Sometimes, depending on the circuit, sometimes you'll be asked to wear a, a helmet as well. Okay. But yeah. We're only doing forty miles an hour max. It's very very slow. But you know. The yeah, the driver of the tracking vehicle can still yeah hit the brakes or go over. It. There was a classic yeah. one once, very funny. I won't tell you who it is, but if he ever watches this, he's going to go pukes. We were driving, uh, we were doing some tracking outside of a circuit in France in okay. the back of a Land Rover Discovery Discovery Three, which has yeah, it was really good because it has the like the picnic table back doors. The back doors open like that. And yeah, I was yeah, lying yeah. down in the back of the car and we were doing, it was, it was actually doing some tracking shots of a motorcycle. And I was lying down in the back of the car and we were driving along and suddenly he went, beep, sorry! And he hit the speed bump and the back door flew up and hit me in the face and then the top came down and hit me in the back of the head. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm so, sort of lying in the back of the car, supported on my elbows, phone right. off and everything, and suddenly I get the boot, yeah, the bottom of the boot hit me in the chin, and then the boot lid hitting me in the back of the head, because he was doing 40, he was only doing 40 miles an hour, but he just that, suddenly- That's no joke, yeah, on, that's, 40 miles an hour isn't that break, slow to do that. Break. And he hit this thing and he just went, dum, dum, and, yeah. Oh man, how, how was it? Was it, you didn't have, did you have to go to the hospital or anything? No, you no, were no, right no, there. you were fine. okay. I was oh, good. Fine. He was just more. Yeah, well, had some, yeah, had some good. We had some choice words for him afterwards. I'm sure. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah. so um, right, let's yeah. let's um, uh, let's just import this picture into into Lightroom. Oh, here's the photo. Oh, cool. Oh, you can you can is. really see the light. Yeah. So the so the lovely thing about this low light is we've got this great big shadow area here, so you can see that it's it's it's. It's lit from the left hand from the left hand side of the frame. So this side of the car is in shadow. But the great thing is that the smoke is cross lit, so it really highlights. Yeah. So yeah, again, I'm gonna I'm gonna you know do my little white balance trick. So I'm gonna click the white balance, and just. Huh. So what, how are you choosing which area to? Is there is there a, a play there to choose which yeah, area to click for white so, balance? Yeah. So okay, okay. Well, I'll, I'll I'll give you a quick demonstration. So if yeah. I if I went onto this this area here, 
it right. goes very very blue wow. it was yeah, a really yeah. pink area that i was choosing if i go onto the road it's actually pretty natural it if is if i went onto if i went onto a black it goes green. oh wow yeah <laughs> if i if i go onto someone that's reflecting the sky it goes pretty brown again because it's it's looking at the sky so yeah. i always go for a little bit of neutral tarmac that's almost as close to gray as you can find Gotcha. And then just play with it very slightly. Yeah, I like it a little bit warm because it's the evening. So let's just do, do a little radial filter jobby on the wheels. Just pull that wheel out slightly. And we just duplicate it, bring it forward onto there. So you can see those amazing... Yeah, no, that does a great job. It just pulls them out a little bit. Again, those yeah. wheels. You can see the amazing brake calipers in there. And then probably what I might do is just on this shadow area. So there's a little thing that you can do called range mask in, in Lightroom. And then I can, I can just choose a couple of, couple of colors here and then I can just darken down that shadow area. Oh, wow. <laughs> so it just makes it look a little bit more cross lit and then yeah, just yeah. add a bit of contrast to it. Just Much to more like it, moody. Yeah. And then what I'll do is I'm going to go to the side of the car Oh, nuts. I'll go to the side of the car and then just put that grab that over there and then just pull the shadows out a little bit just to make it uh, look a little bit nicer. It's got yeah. a little bit dark at the back. That's and then, yeah. yeah, just, just to cheat, I'll probably put a, a, grad, a grad on the sky Gotcha. Crunch, crunch, yeah. crunch the sky up a bit. Make the sky a little bit. <laughs> that does so much suddenly. Yeah. yeah. You can see how when I, when I use the crop tool, there's this grid pattern, and it's the yeah. rule of thirds. Okay. And yeah, it's always a good idea to put something which is the focal point, which is probably this front wheel here, on or yeah thereabout yeah. on on yeah. one of these one of these thirds. So there you've got this really nicely composed shot that actually sits quite nicely. That's mega. Um, That's amazing. And then That's amazing. just sharp, sharpen up the back slightly. Just it's an amazing back. difference, isn't it? Just, I mean, you know, we were saying it earlier, but it's an amazing difference just how much a little bit of time coming, coming in on post elevates these photos. It, look, it looks incredible. Yeah. There's the before and after, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Got sort of, we got sort of sidetracked a little bit, I guess, there with the, uh, with the golden hour coming in for us. Um, and we can go down and get like a really sort of epic big skid. I mean, the McLaren 600 LT is a, it's a pretty beautiful car uh, when, <laughs> when it comes down to it. The, the design keys, I guess, they come, they come from a bunch of, I mean, there's a bunch of other McLarens that sort of are similar in the range. Uh, this one's more of a sort of track car, if I'm right. Uh, yeah, ex exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, the, the the 600 LT is based on the on the McLaren Sports Series, which is gotcha. the 570, the 570S and the 570S Spider, and the 600 LT is their yeah you know, their you know, super sports version of the 570, and it's a limited edition run car. Um, you know, it's got these incredibly um, cool and unique top exit exhausts, which are you. Know, the first time anybody ever sees it, you know, it just blows them away. And the They're fact amazing, it does, yeah. It does genuinely blow flames out the exhaust <laughs> pipes as well. Um, yeah, it's uh, yeah, extraordinarily cool car. <laughs> You have to get some like uh, marshmallows or whatever and uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. come out there. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, I mean, sitting in there, the engine sound, like, is it the kind of car where you can sort of just cruise and, you know, go for a long, or, or is the engine sound really, is it, is it a lot? You know, is it a no, lot no, to no, be No, 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 absolutely not. No, 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 it's, it's super comfortable, super, yeah, super, super chilled inside. You can hear the radio, for goodness sake. Um, not that you ever want to switch the radio on. Right. But I, I tell you, if, if, if I've got one regret, I, I kind of wish I'd bought a um, McLaren 600 LT Spider because the rear window you can drop down when the roof's oh, up. Oh, cool. And yeah, so you yeah. get all that amazing exhaust sound coming through the back. So you can, you've got the luxury of having the, yeah, the, the roof up, but you can drop the rear window down and the noise is phenomenal. That's the only thing I wish I'd... Yeah, yeah, 
had as, a, as, a, as an option on my car, but uh, no, 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 it's very, very civilised. Well, speaking of cool locations, I think we picked this one out because it's one of the best places, I think, to do a big skid on. Um, and I think it would make for a good photo. We've got lovely light again, so let me just... Um... We do, it's, yeah, it's just perfect timing, actually. Is there, is there a hill that you can jump over, maybe? <laughs> Let's have a look. There might be, actually. I might be able to jump in from the right-hand side here. Let's have a go. I can get a little bit of air going this way. I'm going to see how much speed I can get up. The timing's going to have to be pretty good, I think. You should never photograph road cars off-road, though, by the way. No? No, <laughs> it doesn't look right. <laughs> I can get a little bit of air, but it's <laughs> messy. No, OK. <laughs> there's, a, there's a really lovely section where you're coming down the hill backlit. I tell you what, yeah, a, a shot here, if we just if we just reverse up, if you just if you just head on up up around this yeah, left left hand just coming up there okay. and then just come bu buzzing down and, and try and flick it yeah as you're going yeah okay. are you going the wrong way around the circuit i don't there's no there's no right way there's no oh, right good way. i'll come on round. <laughs> <laughs> i'll come on round. and so i'm heading down there down there now yeah Yeah, if you can, if you can do that again, and then just pitch it into 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 the left hander, and just try and get a little bit of uh, a bit of sideways skid on. going on. All right, all right. Just this, the this tires might be a really here. cool shot to try and do on a on a sort of longish lens. Okay, keep going, and now. Ah, Let's see. <laughs> There's a spot of handbrake there. I don't know if you're going to catch this at the rear tires locking. No, this is good. This is looking good. I got it. Keep, okay. Yeah, that's looking good. So it, it's it seems quite difficult to get the car yeah sharp front to back, which isn't yeah, which isn't yeah. unusual, even in in real real world. So is that is that come down? We we spoke a little bit about it earlier, but we haven't really talked about it a lot yet. So this comes down to sort of uh, choosing. I mean, a little bit comes down to using um, wide angle versus versus longer lenses. But you see, the interesting thing is that what yeah, the shot that I've created here, it looks like it's shot on a long lens, but it also looks like it's shot on a wide angle lens. So we've created something a little unusual here because we've got that uh, lack of depth of field that you would get on a telephoto lens, but we've got the distortion yeah. that you get on a wide angle lens. So you can see that the background is really nicely out of focus. Um, Yet the car is slightly stretched and squashed, which is the attributes that you get with a wide angle lens. So right. I think this is, yeah, this is not a picture that you could take in real life, but uh, I kind of like it. It's got, it's, it's got great drama to it. So shall I just give it a quick tweak? Yeah, give it a tweak. I'd love to see that. I, I completely agree. You know, I think it, as, a, as a whole, without, I don't have the, the eye to be able to say, you know, to be able to pick the things out you were saying, but I think the shot itself, it has that feeling of distance, especially with the car sort of careening through the uh, through the uh, corners. Yeah. I'm going to use the saturation tool to make this McLaren orange really pink. Look, look at that. Look at that. That's awesome. That's, That's awesome. amazing. I've got to say, from like a composition perspective, from like just looking at the photo, I think it's one of my favourite ones we've taken today. I really, I really like it. I like the colours in the background as well. Very colourful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put it in there. Yeah. Oh, look, we've got glowing brake disc. There you go. That. There it is. That's because you put the handbrake on. <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking, yeah. How's the brake? It's like jammed the handbrake on mid corner. <laughs> there you go. There you go. And then we'll just put a little grind on the sky. So, um, so again, so let's just do a little before and after. Then you can see that Amazing, by, yeah. not, by not doing very much, you've, you've managed to bring it into a, a, yeah, a, a real environment. Yeah, exactly. It feels it feels great, and I, I honestly, you know, because the sort of the browns of the castle, the mm. castle doesn't look. You you might imagine because you're bringing so much red out of the frame that yeah. that that's going to get bleached, but actually it looks good. By using the eyedropper tool, you're you're finding an area of of neutrality to adjust the white balance to, rather than the whole image. I gotcha. Okay. If you're ready, Patrick, yeah. we can head on to our next waypoint. Uh, we're going to head a little bit further down the road. Um, and as we drive, I'm curious to chat to you a little bit about, you talked a little bit about kind of preparing the scene, even like at some points grabbing garbage yeah. off the street and stuff like that. How far yeah. does that go? How, 
how um you know are there times when you'll be like the odds will just be stacked against you yeah absolutely i mean yeah i think about it, uh, an occasion when i was um photographing the uh, the McLaren 600 lt spider up in scotland right um the same shoot that we where we demonstrated that rig shot and we were following the route of the North Coast 500 and we were desperately trying to get to this amazing bridge called Carnesby Bridge. And it looked pretty close on the map, but when you actually start driving and you realize that it's a long, long, long way. It was the middle of the summer, so the days were really long. And I don't think it got dark until probably, yeah, at least 10 o'clock in the evening. And we had a 720, uh, a 600LT Spider, and yeah, a van with all of our kit in it. And we were driving up there and it was just getting darker and darker and the weather was getting worse and worse and it was starting to rain and it was really miserable and we got there and it was just horrible and we kind of looked at each other and went what do we do and because you're on site said, do you know what let's just give it a go let's just give um. it a go and we yeah did one run over the bridge and and i just said do you know what this looks utter pants it's just not worth it but then you come back and you see that if you've got the fundamentals of the shoot in place, which is it's exposed well, it's yeah. composed nicely, and the car's yeah. sharp, and the scenery is amazing, hey, you, you know, maybe we did get something. So I can show you... Um, yeah, let's, you let's know, have a look, yeah. Here we, here we have the shot that I was talking about. So you, you can see that it's, it's pretty grim, it's pretty dull. So what I'm hmm. so what I'm going to do in Lightroom is I'm just going to I'm just going to do my usual trick with the white balance and get the road looking about right. All of a sudden the road looks the right colour it, and it's gone from looking sort of gloomy to it actually looking yeah you know, it has it has some crispness and then and it almost looks like a sort of fog like a purposeful atmospheric yeah. fog <laughs> rather yeah, than exactly. rather than just then, smogginess. I'm just going to boost the orange slightly in the car just to make it look just a little bit more orangey. And then I shall edit in this program called Luminar 4. Okay. And Luminar 4 is, um, it's a bit genius. Okay, <laughs> I'll strap in for this. I've never <laughs> heard of it. I've never heard, I don't have no idea. Okay, so here we are in Luminar. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of a few bits and pieces that I don't like. You'll probably see down here, there's this yellow, um, what it is, is, is there's a massive electricity pylon just above my head. And that is a, a thing to stop me tripping over the wire. So I'm just going to use the erase tool in Luminar just to paint that out. And also, I'm going, just going to get rid of this nasty okay. little handrail yeah. here. <laughs> Just erased from reality, just like a Marvel paint, movie. Paint those bits out. This is where using a, a graphics tablet is um, is is really nice because it's so 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 accurate. Yeah, and because you're I, just using like you're using like a little stylus to just exactly. get right in there. Yeah. Oh wow! Boom. <laughs> <Look at that. laughs> Great. <laughs> so it just, it just grabs some stuff from next door, does it, and uh, works out. Yeah, what, it's. Uh, it, yeah, yeah it's, exactly. It's it's a it's a kind of a clone tool, with, uh, but you know it just um, if you just note, see, I can just turn it on and off. Yeah, hey, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, so <laughs> I'm going to put what's called a LUT uh, on this image, and okay. it's uh, you'll see here it says Color Styles LUT. Uh, LUT stands for lookup tables, and it, um, they basically have created all of these really lovely uh, different grading effects. And oh you wow! Can flick, flick through them, and you can just. I I always like this one, uh, yeah. 1990, because it's just it gives it an amazing bit of drama. But I just pair yeah, it awesome. back a little bit. Do it all green like a Harry Potter film. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, that's that's basically what happens is is people yeah watch movies and they go, yeah. how did they create that look? And then <laughs> yeah. somebody will will spend hours fiddling about, and they'll they'll go bang. This is. Yeah, if you want to call it the Harry Potter luck. Now oh, wow. I've got, I've got okay. um, so augment AI uh, landscape enhancer. Bang! You know <laughs> right. that immediately. I'm leaning in. <laughs> this is amazing. The AI land. I mean, this is amazing. The difference is just unbelievable, isn't it? 
and then you can um, then yeah I can I can be really classy here and I can actually replace the sky so I've got Let's a go. load of amazing sun, uh, sunsets that I've shot over the years <laughs> That's horrible. That's um, amazing. I look like a Star Wars um, image. Let's just see if, let's just let's find one that works before we go with it. Staring in awe at it now at this point. Yeah. This picture is amazing. Uh, and it's it's nuts because this is all the photo shoot that you were like at the time going, let's call it a day. Let's yeah, yeah, yeah. this. Exactly, exactly. It, it, it didn't work. I wasn't happy with it. You know, just thought, you know, what an utter waste of time it was getting up there. Mega. Literally, yeah. We've gone from that to that it's in like, a few yeah. very quick moves. <laughs> what, a, what an amazing tool. That's, that's so... This, this leads me on to a, to a question that I think a lot of... We have a very active community, a very creative community on Forza. And there are lots of people out there who are, you know, putting together photography within the game. In a second, we're going to we're going to have a look at a couple of people yeah. who uh, put some photos together. But a question right. I think on a lot of people's lips when uh, it comes to sort of in-game photography, but also real-world automotive photography, is how do you make that jump from being a weekend warrior, from being somebody who's out there going to the track and taking photos for their own use, uh, to mm -hmm. being a professional or getting paid for their work? What does that look like, or what's, what, what was that journey like for you? If you want a career as a photographer, in order to get noticed, you have to do something different whether it be the grade that you put out on your pictures or just the style that you shoot in, or you've got to look at other photographers and try and emulate their stuff and then do something different. Yeah. Because you have to get noticed. You also, the most important thing is business. Have really? a sense okay. of business. Yeah. You might be a great photographer, but if you can't deal with clients, you're, you, you might get one job. There was a, a great phrase that somebody said when there was a client that was pushing and pushing and pushing to, to, for them to take one picture that they knew would be horrible. And they, they said to <laughs> right. me, do what the client wants first and then do what you want to do and show them both. Gotcha. gotcha. And nine times out of ten, the client will go, right. yes, you were right. And that's rather than being like, no, I won't do that. That's a bad idea. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. You've got to be like, I, I'll do it, but then we'll also do it my way. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's and and yeah, but there's a huge lesson to be learned in that. Yeah, that you have to be um, you have to be humble. There has to be an element yeah, of humility right. in the way that you deal with your clients. But it's incredibly rewarding. It's incredibly rewarding. Yeah, uh, there's a magazine out at the moment that's got a shoot that we did in it of the McLaren F1 that won Le Mans in 1995. It's not often that we get pictures published yeah, that we actually do shoots for magazines anymore, yeah, to that level. And to be able to go into the, into the shop and buy a copy of this magazine and leaf through and go, we created that. It's a so huge, cool. huge um, feeling of satisfaction. And, you know, we, yeah, I keep saying this, but I feel very, very lucky to be able to do this because you know, not, not a lot of people get the opportunity. Well, from, from one lucky person to a couple more lucky people, we're going to have a look at a couple of community members and the photos that they put together from Forza Horizon 4. Uh, we challenged them to create a static photo, so a photo of the car sitting mm -hmm. still. I haven't actually seen, the, seen or studied entirely their photos yet, so I'm keen to have another look. Um, the, they also shot some short videos in which they sort of described their creative decision making while they were doing it. And uh, yeah. we can check the first out now. And that was from Robbie. Hi, I am Robbie. It's so nice to be here talking to you. So let's talk about my photo. Uh, this photo for me represents what Forza is all about. Beautiful car and beautiful scenery. And um, this McLaren fitted perfectly to the beautiful sunset I got in Fortin Island. Something curious about this photo, it took me a long time for taking it because I never got I never got to the good weather. It was always rain or cloudy or it wasn't nice, it wasn't what I wanted and I was getting frustrated because I know that on Forza we always get nice skies. So 
I am a little stubborn, so I just waited and then I got on this beautiful sky and said, that's it, that's what I have been waiting all this time. And I went in photo mode and I did the photo and I'm very, very pleased with the result. I really hope you guys like it too. And um, that's it. I think it's important to wait. We never, You never know when you're going to get the shot you want. Well, with that, I also have a question to the photographer. I want to know, what do you do in this case in real life? When you are expecting, you are depending on the nice weather or the other way around, you are depending on the bad weather for your photo and it doesn't happen. How do we improvise? Or you just give up and say, no, I don't want it. I want the weather that I have in my mind. What do you do? That's it. Well, thank you all for inviting me and I hope to see you all around. Ciao. Uh, Robbie's one of our one of our top community members, and you know an interesting question there as well. Something we've touched on already a little bit, but yeah. uh, you know again, uh, what, what do you do when when things aren't going your way? When you know that there's a good shot out there, but you can't quite can't quite get the conditions right for it. Uh, I think she's absolutely right. She's hit the nail on the head that you have to wait. You have to wait, and sometimes you have to wait a long time. If you have the luxury of time, you wait. Um, I think for a lot of in a, in a lot of situations when you are commissioned to work for a day and you have to produce a set of images in a day you have to improvise so if it's pouring with rain you you either have to get wet or you have to you go under go under cover and you have to find some shelter you have to protect your kit from getting wet yeah there's plenty of occasions in racing where you know you do a 24 hour race and you ha literally have all four seasons in 24 hours yeah. and you have to be prepared you have to have all of the all of your rain gear um one of the one of the most important things with shooting cars for clients is the car has to be clean particularly in in very humid countries in the morning you go out and you've got an amazing sunrise and there's been loads of dew on the car overnight and the minute you open the door the whole thing steams up you get condensation on the roof and you're just cleaning 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 and then yeah you got somebody cleaning the car and you run out and they run out and you go it's back and this patch of condensation just grows That's right. and um yeah <laughs> You, you can retouch stuff out that isn't too bad. You know, I think looking at Robbie's photo here as well, I've just got it open in front of me. Mm. You can see that, you know, it is, it's very clean. It's a very sort of, it's a very crisp image. And I love the way that you can see the sky as well reflected on the front bonnet. There's a real nice feeling of place because of that. Yeah, yeah. Um, earlier on, I mentioned that, uh, yeah, that golden hour, yeah. my preferred is after the sun has actually gone down. That's right. That's right. And, and that's a classic that? example. It's a classic oh. example. The sun has already gone down, but you get this beautiful you know, sky reflected in the car with, with, with soft shadows. So you haven't got half sunlight banging off the car, creating shadows. You've got this lovely soft light that's above, you know, the sky is above the car, and the top surfaces of the car reflect the beautiful sunset. She's done a great, great job. And the wheels are nice and bright as well. That's awesome. So... Our next uh, photographer is someone known as Broken Vegetable in the community. Uh, he's been around for a long time, he's got an awesome gamer tag, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to see what he says. Hello everyone, I am Broken Vegetable, and some of you may know me um, for my photos that I take in video games. I started taking pictures in Forza Motorsport 2. I did a little bit there not too many and then ever since then I took photos in Forza just to update my wallpapers and stuff um, I didn't start competing until Forza Motorsport 5 when they released the Nürburgring track um, and I won a competition for the Nürburgring and then after that it wasn't till Forza Horizon 3 that I started entering the weekly comps that they had and since then I've won countless, over 40 uh, weekly comps. The photo that I have chosen was uh, this one that you can see uh, was a, a two car shot. I had a friend come into the game and position their car so that way I could take this shot. 
Um, I like this shot because I'm a big fan of aperture and I think that regardless of what photo you're using, aperture will make what you want people to see stand out more. Aperture for me is probably my main tool that I use in my uh, photos to make them stand out, to make them pop, to give it that little bit of, um, I want your eyes to look in a certain place and then that's why you see the, the item or the object the way you do because I'm sort of positioning your eyes to look at a certain place on the photo. I would like to ask what's one thing that you wish you weren't held back by, whether it be time or money or uh, tools or whatever it may be. Thank you. Um, I hope to see you guys in game. Wow, great to hear from Broken Vegetable there, and uh, he's definitely you know a, a real scientist of the of the game. He was particularly curious, Patrick, to ask about sort of restrictions in real world photography. What's the kind of thing that you feel held back by? What would it look like? Uh, for you to, to be released from that, what is that thing? I think probably the. Um, I, I think he was absolutely right when he when he he mentioned uh, time restrictions. I think time. Uh, yeah, uh, it's almost certain that you will come away from a shoot thinking, if only I'd had a little bit more time, I could have done. A, yeah, I could have done it a little bit better. Mm. Uh, I think probably one thing that if I had a. If I had a you know a, a, a genie and I could ask for one wish, it would be yeah. be able to recce the shoot beforehand and go and um, you know, drive the route, see where all the opportunities are, and have no restriction on time as far as the cars needing to be back. Um, which is why the way that he works in gaming is you know for me sounds really luxurious yeah spending you know as as long as he wants just crafting that picture well we i mean we saw it earlier today right with uh with golden hour shooting you know even there it was like we've got to we've got, you know, we've got maybe five attempts to get this right yeah, um yeah, yeah. i'm i'm looking right now at broken vegetables photo and i mean he was talking a lot about guiding the eye there using focus to guide the eye yeah. and I mean, that surely is its what stands out about this photo to me. There's this really, you know, in the, in the right-hand side of the picture there, a really crisp uh, uh, front end of a McLaren. You can see the logos. You can see which uh, which model of car it is. You can see what make of car it is. Yeah. Uh, and then in the background, there's kind of a more sort of, uh, yeah, a, a more impressionistic, I suppose, background to put on my... Yeah, uh, words. You're, you're, you're absolutely right. He's 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 done yeah two things. Yeah, he's drawn your eye into the the car on the right hand side of the frame, and then he's given you a completely different angle of of a, of a similar vehicle that yeah allows you to yeah dream a little bit more about what you know what it would be like to uh, to own one of these things perhaps. Uh, interestingly enough, yeah, there's one thing that really catches my eye straight away. Which is something that we're always battling with, and that's the wheel centers. Um, <laughs> the, wheel, the wheel center, for for me, is one of the biggest bugbears of my life. If only I could take those wheel centers out and turn them to the right shape, yeah, to be in the right position. Sorry, every every <laughs> time, and we yeah, we retouch them. We we do rotate them in retouch if if we can't. But it's a it's a really lovely shot, and I I love his philosophy of only working within the game and. Um, yeah, keeping it real. That's right. That's right. Yeah, no, it's amazing. The eye for detail that you have to have. I would never, I would never have noticed that. Yeah, I laughed when you said wheel centers. I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> well, is that in the image somewhere? Yeah. <laughs> for your last challenge, and perhaps first challenge today, because we haven't really been doing challenges, uh, it's going to be a kind of a, 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 a car and track combination that we've been giving to every single one of the guests coming on uh, the Forts and McLaren show. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a run around uh, what we call the Bambi run, uh, the Bambara Coast Circuit in a McLaren Senna. Uh, and you can see how you measure up to the likes of uh, Bruno Senna um, and a few of our community members as well, and uh, how your lap time stacks up. Uh, this is so unfair. <laughs> <laughs> You're a natural racing driver because the excuses. I think. I think we've had excuses since the start of the show. It's been building, <laughs> building up. Good grief! All right, Can you here we go. Me? <laughs> I mean, it's a. It, yeah, I mean, it's a generous offer. 
Um, I want to see though what your chops are like. You spend your whole uh, life working with your fingers, taking taking snaps with the camera, uh, yeah, navigating yeah, yeah. menus with your thumbs on the back of the camera. You must have pretty agile uh, gaming instincts from that. I've, I've nailed this now. There you go. See, it's 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 in your blood. Doesn't take long, does it? Doesn't take a second, mate. This, <laughs> there you go. So this is your first, that's your sighter lap out there on track. Is it? Am I going to do yeah. two more after this? You get two more after this to set a decent There's not going to be any grass left. <laughs> There's not going to be any McLaren 600 LT left, yeah. Or well, Senna, actually. <laughs> Senna, that's right, it is now, isn't it? <laughs> Won't be any of that left, just be, a, uh, just be a seat skidding along the asphalt by the end of this. Judging by your expression, I can't see the screen, but it looks like it's going well. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's like... it's, hey, I've got sweaty palms. Okay. <laughs> um, the nerves are kicking in. The racing driver's instinct. Oh, You've been around oh. racing drivers, you know, your whole life. You you must have thought from time oh, to time, I, what what would I, how would I fare? I can talk a great race, but uh, that's about, yeah. <laughs> what, what's, what's the old adage? Those that can do, those that can't talk about it. <laughs> that's right that's exactly it those who can't talk about it yeah <laughs> can relate to that okay Whee! Hey, okay, so that, so get oh. out you know take you never did you did you get a lap in i did get in mate keep right keep it up You've got two more get yourself a sweet fast lap and you'll be right up there on the leaderboard i am still <laughs> thinking that there should be a there should be some kind of handicap no the other way around bonus advantage for uh, photographers out there, you know? Um, Look, there, are, there are plenty of photographers who are younger than me who have way more time on their hands. Okay. <laughs> so they, they might have like, uh, like more chops on this game, is that what you're saying? Yeah, 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 exactly. Okay. <laughs> oh no, once you get into a tank slapper, it's really difficult. It's, it, it is. It's real it is life. Hard. Yeah, the car. The car once it slips away from you, it's hard. It's hard to keep uh, keep under control. I'm I'm looking forward to reviewing this footage later. I feel as though oh, you know. <laughs> I feel as though you've got some talent sure. <laughs> in hiding it from us. This is so embarrassing because I've sat next to some of the world's greatest racing drivers in these cars. And they make yeah. it look so easy in real life. And I reckon so I can do the same as them in real life, but damn if I can do it in the game. I mean, I, there we go. <laughs> I tell you, Bruno, Bruno made it look uh, look pretty easy. In the, he had, he he had, had a, a whole, steering wheel. He had, he a, had a steering, steering wheel, wheel and pedals, everything. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> oh. You know, years of training. How come it just died? Did I damage the car too much? <laughs> Did it just have it ended it for you? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what you did. I don't know what you did. How many just laps did you get? Great, just went to a blank screen and then checkpoint <laughs> missed. Oh, it's done You're it still again. in it. You're still in it. You just gotta keep you gotta keep inside the checkpoint. You gotta Oh is this the check is this the checkpoint challenge? <laughs> it's it's a lap challenge, but in order to get to, to tell that you've gone around the lap, you have to go through the checkpoints. Oh, you can't, otherwise you can just cut the lap. Like, you didn't tell me that. Well, what's, what's to tell you? <laughs> like, like, you have to go around the corners. <laughs> well, yeah. I thought I could, I thought I could collect the flags on the, on the, oh, the checkpoint. Oh, no. Don't miss the checkpoint. Don't do that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah sorry. <laughs> how, um... How, how are you getting on there? How's the um, what's the what's the lap time looking like so far? Oh, I, Is I, it? I can't take my eyes off the car. I can't look at it. <laughs> uh, target fifty-one. Target fifty-one. Okay. Um, that again. Target is fifty-one. Best is one twenty-nine. One twenty-nine. That's better than it could have been. Breaking that breaking that sub one minute mark is is tricky. Um, I feel like that 51 might have been might have been put there by uh, by a bit of a mean, you know, causes being a bit mean by making that your rival. Yeah. It's the reason you keep asking me how it's going is because it's never taken this long for anybody to get around the track. <laughs> 
is, has the Xbox broken? <laughs> is, is, is there some kind of some kind of health issue, perhaps? Have we um, had a power cut. <laughs> have we had a power cut. <laughs> <laughs> no, of course not. No. Uh, I would, uh, how did <laughs> Bruno manage to talk all his way? Oh no! No, he, oh, and, like he's really, you know, he's, a, he's really a cool customer as well, right? So he's just chatting away, just sitting there, like just completely relaxed, talking us through the corners. You hit the castle. Yeah, that's how far <laughs> off the track I went. Right. I mean, I mean, and across the line. Hey. Oh, wow, amazing. <laughs> Great job! I'm Great not job, gonna do one. You can keep going. It won't. It won't stop uh, no, you. No, I'm fine. But, I'll, I'll okay, okay. 129. If that's all right. 129. Great job. Great job. Well, okay job. Average job. Not great job. At least we know that Bruno Senna has a smile on his face right now. If you didn't catch my road trip with Bruno, that's on the channel as well. We'll keep adding to the leaderboard with each episode of Forza McLaren. Crikey, well, decent, decent road trip today, Patrick. I've had a good Thank time. You. Yeah, I've really uh, enjoyed it. Really enjoyed it, and I hope um, I hope some of what I've what I've said has been uh, been useful, interesting, educational, relevant. Um, you you know, know, it's it's so fascinating. I've never I've never I've spoken to a bunch of people about Forza and about different sort of aspects of the game, often about the driving and about the racing. I don't think I've ever spoken to a professional photographer before about the game about you know, in-game photography. Mm. It's such an interesting time for that. The the whole thing is evolving so quickly that, yeah, you've brought such, it's, it's so interesting, such interesting context. Well, and uh, so many little nice tricks as well, little hints and tricks for getting, uh, raising yeah. the photography to that next level. Yeah, absolutely. I, I've really enjoyed it. And I think what I found really interesting is, is yeah, the whole concept of, yeah, having that sort of global image that you can you can walk around, you can do everything that I normally have to do before the car arrives, after right. the car's actually been photographed. And it gives you so much, um, uh, so, so much scope for creating something really special. And I hope that uh, yeah, what I've been able to you know, have a play with, have a look at and demonstrate is that just a little bit of thought and a little bit of extra looking, you can turn something you know, great into something really good and really special and very different. And you can do your own, put your own mark on the pictures that you take within, within inside the gaming environment. For, for some of our community members out there who are going to want to follow along, see what you're getting up to, uh, where can they find you? So the agency is called BDI. Our Instagram is BDI Photography. BDI is spelled B-E-A-D-Y-E-Y-E -E -E, rather than the initials BDI. Uh, we're not particularly okay. active on Instagram. It's one of those things where we show stuff that we've been super proud of. There's a lot of stuff that we do which we can't actually talk about. There's a lot of work with development cars, a lot of stuff that is shot for publication that you know, we have to wait until it's published. But hopefully the community can see some stuff uh, on there that is a demonstration of some of the techniques that we've been trying to talk about today. One, one last question before I let you go today, Patrick, yeah. and that's, um, you know, the world, of, the world of computers, especially within automotive, the world of video games and simulation seems to be overlapping so much with the world, uh, the traditional motorsport and, and the ways that that kind of stuff works. When do you think, or do you think at all, you could be hiring as an agency somebody who's a professional in-game photographer rather than a professional uh, real-life photographer. The, the world of Gamer Teresa, as you know, has been proven to be super, super successful. The understanding of how to capture images within games all the way through lockdown became supremely important and there are photographers that I work with who have all of a sudden found a whole new opportunity within the world of business to do in gaming photography and my goodness some of the stuff that you've seen created some of the stuff that's been put out there some of the manufacturers that have been supporting these uh, these um, championships and the the um, the quality of images that have been coming out of these games has been utterly mind-blowing and I do not doubt that in the same way that we all went, ha, digital will never take right. off. That you've absolutely 
hit the nail on the head. It won't be very long before there will be specialist gaming photographers who have as hopefully as long and as a successful and as an enjoyable career as people like me have had. Well, thank you so, so much for uh, giving us some, some of your time today, Patrick. It's been incredible and I uh, can't wait to catch you again. Thank you so much, Ali. It's been great fun talking to you and uh, thanks to all of you for supporting this. It's been a hell of a, hell of a good day.